Okay, mass to mass stoichiometry. The term stoichiometry refers to calculations that involve relating amounts of reactants and products in an equation. And so essentially that's this step in this mole train flow chart that I have, um, the one that involves the mole ratio. So that was an earlier video where we learned about how to use the mole ratio from the coefficients in the balanced equation to relate amounts of one substance to amounts of another. In today's lesson, we are saying, well, realistically, we, since we can't measure or count the moles of a substance in the lab, perhaps we've measured the mass of a solid. For example, 2.5 grams of magnesium ribbon. So if 2.5 grams of magnesium ribbon is burning in oxygen, then our question could be, what mass of product is formed? Or secondly, we could even determine then the mass of oxygen that actually reacts with the two and a half grams of the magnesium. So the key in this mass to mass stoichiometry is that the middle step will always be the mole ratio. So that section we covered in 7.1 is fundamental. In order to first relate the amounts of the two substances that you're working with in the equation, you have to take what you've been given and convert it to moles. And so this goes back to our basic conversion of mass to amount or grams to moles. And as you'll recall, we use molar mass. Now why do I have an A and a B through here? Well, I'm just saying that substance A is that first substance that you're given the mass of. So in this case, two and a half grams of magnesium. So from the mass of magnesium, we'll need to use the molar mass of magnesium to find the moles of magnesium. Then we'll use the mole ratio to find the moles of whatever our second substance is. In question A, we're going to find the mass of the product formed. So when we, when we write a balanced equation, we'll know what the product is and convert with um, molar mass to finding the mass of that product. Or in part B, we'll start off again with the magnesium ribbon and work our way to moles of magnesium ribbon and then find the moles of, in this case, oxygen and then take that through to the mass of oxygen. So I'll work through this example, but essentially that is the fundamental pathway that we use for all of these problems. And the key is to always start with a balanced equation. So here's where your experience writing balanced chemical equations comes in handy. So here we see a metal reacting with oxygen, forming an ionic compound. Recall that I've crossed charges down, right? Positive two and negative two here and reduce those charges in order to get the formula of magnesium oxide. Initially in balancing, the magnesium looks fine, but I need to put a two here to have two oxygens on the right side, matching the two on the left. And now having placed that two, two times one magnesium means I better come over here and put a two. And so the coefficients in this balanced equation are two, one, two. And that's essential for doing the second step here, the mole ratio step. Okay, so if we were to write out how we're planning to approach this, then we should list the given underneath the substance that it's been given about. So here we see two and a half grams of magnesium ribbon. So I scan the equation for the formula of magnesium ribbon. Here it is. I find it in the first reactant. And I write lowercase m equals 2.5 g. So there's the mass of magnesium ribbon as two and a half grams. Now it says that it's reacting with excess oxygen. So the point here is that there is more oxygen than we need to react all of that magnesium. And if it's burning in air, our air has a plentiful supply. Now here's our product. Well, in part A, we're being asked to find the mass of the product form. So the product is specifically magnesium oxide. So I'm looking for the number of grams or the mass of magnesium oxide. So here's where factor, la factor label makes a super concise solution. So I write what I'm looking for on the left side, which is the mass of the magnesium oxide. So in terms of the flow chart, I'm way over here. I'm really if I wrote this out for you, really finding the mass of magnesium oxide, and I'm going to start with the mass of magnesium that I was given. So I'm going to convert that to the moles of magnesium, and then I'll convert that to the moles of magnesium oxide, and then use molar mass to get to the mass of MgO. 
So I'll start with the 2.5 grams of magnesium and using factor label, drop my grams of magnesium unit down here. I know I'm going to moles, so this is setting up using the molar mass of magnesium. So in one mole, if I check out my periodic table, 24.31 grams of magnesium for one mole. I'm not gonna pull out my calculator yet. I'm going to keep going with factor label, carrying down the unit of moles of magnesium. And here's where the mole ratio step comes in because now I'm going to go from moles of magnesium to moles of MgO. I'm gonna switch colors here because I want it to stand out that I'm using the coefficients at this point in the balanced equation. So two moles of magnesium here to two moles of MgO. So it turns out that ratio in lowest terms is one to one, but I'm using the coefficients as they're written in the balanced equation. At this point, if I'm keeping track of my units, grams of magnesium cancels, moles of magnesium cancel, and so I'm continuing on to eventually finish with the grams of magnesium oxide. So I'm going from moles of magnesium oxide to grams of magnesium oxide. So one mole of magnesium oxide contains, and that's where you need to determine your molar mass of magnesium oxide. So we come up with 40, 0.31 grams of MgO. And I can finish cancelling my units here and you'll notice that the unit I'm left with is exactly the unit of the quantity I was looking for. So now on your calculator, 2.5 divided by 24.31 times 2 divided by 2, although if you recognize then that's really just 1 to 1, you can save yourself the keystrokes, and then multiply by 40.31 grams. And so we compute the final answer. Coming up with 4.1 grams of MgO. So you'll notice here that in terms of sig figs, we had uh, two sig figs in our measured value here, four here. These coefficients are exact, they're counted, so we um, don't count these or consider them for sig figs and four here. So I'm looking at four, four, two, so I go with two in the final answer, and grams of MgO. Okay, so there I found the mass of product that reacted. So what we're saying is that when two and a half grams of magnesium ribbon burns and there's excess oxygen, enough oxygen to react all of the magnesium, you will produce 4.1 grams, or should produce, this calculation is predicting you should produce 4.1 grams of MgO. Now later in the unit, we'll look at what really happens. Your calculation predicts a certain mass of product, and yet experimental um, error occurs. There's different things that, different reasons for it, but we often do not obtain that value. So we'll, we'll address that in a later unit or a later lesson on percentage yield. So what about part B? So in part B, we're being asked to find the mass of oxygen that reacted. You need to be thinking here, just because they're asking for the mass of oxygen, if you go back into the question, notice that it says excess, you might be thinking, well, the mass of oxygen, it told us there was excess, so that's all there is to it. But think about what it means to say the mass of oxygen that reacted. There is a specific mass of oxygen that reacted. Definitely there was leftover oxygen, there was lots of oxygen in the air available, but what mass of oxygen actually reacted with this two and a half grams? And here's where we can then use our flow chart with the idea that we can start with the mass of magnesium, find the moles of magnesium, and then use the mole ratio to find the moles of oxygen gas, and then use molar mass to find the grams of oxygen gas, or the mass. And so it's this idea of, again, starting with the balanced equation and indicating what is required and given in the question. And I would recommend that you switch color pens for, you're probably doing all this work in pencil, but you know, change the color of the balancing coefficients so that that stands out to you. And fill in the ones if you need to, so it helps you if you need to use that coefficient. Okay, so again we've 
been given the two and a half grams of magnesium and now we're looking to find the mass of the oxygen gas that actually reacted. Now, does it make sense to you that taking our 4.1 grams of MgO that we found to be produced, does it make sense that that mass should work back to be the same answer? So what I'm saying is, if we start with the 2.5 grams of magnesium and work it all the way through to the mass of oxygen, should we be getting the same answer as if we started with the 4.1 grams of MgO and worked our way towards the mass of oxygen? Well, remember, in order to obtain this mass of product, we use this mass. And we're saying that this is the mass that this mole ratio predicts should be formed. So we incorporated molar mass to help us there, but essentially we're following the coefficients in the balanced equation to determine the moles of each that are reacting and being produced. So it really shouldn't matter. We should be able to get the same mass of O2 here, whether we start with two and a half grams, in which case we'll use molar mass of magnesium, work with the two to one ratio, then find the mass of O2. Or we should get the same answer as if we started with 4.1 grams of MgO use the molar mass of MgO, then the mole ratio here, and then on to mass of O2. So I'm going to go from magnesium, but you could go ahead and pick the MgO to start and see if you end up with the same answer. Okay, and so I have taken the mass of Mg, divided by the molar mass of magnesium, used the mole ratio of magnesium to oxygen gas from the coefficients in the balanced equation, and then finally the molar mass of oxygen gas. And factor label, I can cancel my units, show two sig figs in the end, rounding to 1.6 grams of O2. So I think this is a very neat, concise solution, um, efficient use of time. It's true that you may prefer to do the work in steps and if that's the case no problem it might take a little bit more time to write out but if you understand it better nothing wrong with that just watch your symbolism so if you're going to find the moles of magnesium to start perhaps you're using a formula of mass over molar mass or perhaps you're just using factor label at that point but two and a half grams over the 24.31 grams per mole will produce a certain number of moles of mg and so I've kept a lot of digits, anticipating two sig figs in the end. I've kept a few past that. And I also did not clear my calculator, because leaving that answer in my calculator means that I will have all the digits in the calculation as I move forward. And so in the second step, I'm finding the moles of O2, following the mole ratio as provided in the balanced equation. And then finally, I will need to do my third step, so calculate the mass of O2 using the molar mass of oxygen. And so you can see, I've done the three steps, so this would have been the first step here, second step here, and third step here. And uh, every time on the left side, I show you what it is that I'm about to calculate, and the units that I come up with correspond to that symbol. And finally then, I have 1.6 grams of O2 reacted just like I did in the factor label method. And so, in, by the way, in step number three here, you could have used the formula. If you're using formulas, then you could have used moles times molar mass, and that would have set up your calculation just the same. So, finishing with 1.6 grams of O2. So it's your choice whether you string all the conversion factors together and, and write the solution out like I did here, or whether you break it into steps. Um, make sure that you start with a balanced equation. And I'll just look to bring that down. Make sure that you start with a balanced equation and that you list what's been given and what you're trying to find um, to help organize the problem. Okay, there's a second short video on the concept of stoichiometric amount, so I encourage you to check that out.